Today, I'm going to be eating and training like Sanji from One Piece all day. With the live action hitting this weekend, I was super excited and I really wanted to try Sanji's diet. Luckily, the actor Taz Skylar is pretty close to stats that our boy Sanji is. According to the Wikipedia, Sanji is 5'11", 176 pounds. This puts him in line with the Yuji diet we did previously. I'm gonna be making all of the food that Sanji actually makes in One Piece. This is not Sanji's cookbook, this is my cookbook because Sanji's cookbook Book is actually just on my phone. Link is down below for both of them if you want to pick them up. First dish I'm going to be making is the fried rice that Sanji makes for Jean as he comes to his boat starving. This recipe is in the Sanji cookbook and it's relatively easy to put together. Side note, the fried rice in the cookbook is different from the one in the anime, which is great because this means we can make breakfast relatively quickly and then get ready to train. I have a very big appreciation for Sanji because the way he likes to eat is how most chefs do. We typically just have leftovers for family meal. And so this fried rice does seem to follow those rules because this fried rice is actually a corned beef fried rice. I made the corned beef yesterday so this way it's ready to go today. But first I'm gonna throw in just a few onions. This is about two tablespoons of diced onion. Gonna 100% smoke out the house today. With the onions I'm going to throw in some sliced mushrooms. Remember these are straight out of the Sanji cookbook. Now I'm gonna cook this down until those mushrooms are nice and soft. This is when I'm gonna throw in my diced corned beef. I diced this up right after that corned beef was nice and cool that we had cooked the previous day. If you don't wanna make a whole corned beef for this, you can definitely buy some canned. It's not as good, but it'll do the job. Also remember, corned beef is very salty, so I'm not gonna be seasoning this with salt until the end to see if it needs any other seasoning. This is when I'm gonna throw in around two cloves of crushed garlic. I can't wait for the fire alarm to go off. Once the garlic is kind of tossed around a bit and not fully cooked, this is when I'm gonna throw in one and a half cups or around 250 grams of old rice. This is just day old rice. Make sure you take the time and break down all of that rice. You can also break this down ahead of time by hand, which is relatively easy as well. And after getting that rice nice and toasted, I'm gonna move all of the rice to the sides of the wok. Throw in just a bit of oil to the center because the next step is frying up two whole eggs and I'm gonna toss it right into the center of my wok. Give this a nice quick scramble. And then after just literally 30 seconds or so, the eggs should be nice and soft set. This is when I'm actually gonna start breaking it down a bit more and then incorporate the rest of the rice from the wok and give this a nice toss. Finally, I'm gonna bring the heat to a medium. I'm gonna add in just about a tablespoon and a half of soy sauce. Now I'm gonna kill the heat and I'm gonna add around two chopped green onions. And last but not least, just a few sesame seeds right in there. Give this one last quick toss and this is Sanji's corned beef fried rice that he made for Jean so he wouldn't starve. This entire fried rice took just about 11 minutes to put together but granted I had everything prepped ahead of time and I had to spend time making the corned beef. So if you're strapped for time you can absolutely use something like chicken thigh instead of the corned beef but it'll have a very different flavor because corned beef is so distinct. This entire breakfast comes out to around 515 calories, 35 grams of protein, 20 grams of fat, and around 50 grams of carbohydrates. It's a pretty significant amount of food for that amount of calories which is really nice. Now the real question is is, can this save a man's life? Cheers. This can save your life. This is freaking delicious. Mm. This is gonna be the perfect pre-workout for what we're about to do. And that workout, my friends, is provided by Jack's Blade. Sanji's main way of attacking is with his legs. He is the one anime character that you know does not skip leg day. That's why I'm using Jack's Blade's Sanji style workout for this. I've also learned a thing or two since my Yuji video where I practiced Taekwondo for seven days. And before I start, I like to get everything slightly warmed up. Sometimes I'm really tight before a workout, so I like to make sure I do some really quick dynamic stretches before I begin the process. The first exercise are alternating jump kicks. I'm doing four sets at 60 seconds each. This seems like a really simple movement, but it does really burn you out. I could barely get through four sets of this. How was that the warm up? How? After that, I immediately went into pistol squats, but this is a different variation of a pistol squat where I have my leg behind me. This is just to help me with my posture because I actually can't do a true pistol squat without any assistance. It's something that I'm actually working towards. I immediately went into burpee knees. This is where you do a traditional burpee, but then you explode upward and do a high knee. You can also try to throw a kick with this, which makes it incredibly difficult.
Not gonna lie, a little bit of that fried rice came up. And because all of our Straw Hat Pirates are absolutely ripped, we have to work on the abs, which makes everything else so much stronger. This is three sets at 30 reps of scissor kicks. And then finally, it was one more burnout session. This is quick feet followed by kicks. I'm counting to about 10 for my quick feet and then throwing kicks with each leg, making sure I alternate to each side. This goes on for a solid four minutes before I'm just completely dead. Now this part wasn't in Jack's Blade's workout, but I decided to add some shadow kicking. It felt really good to throw just a few kicks here and there to kind of loosen up my body after all of that. After that last set of shadow kicks, I'm absolutely gassed and it has a lot to do with how tight my body is most of the time. So I'm going to incorporate something a little bit different from what Jack's Blade has and that's just some flow training to help start to open everything up. This is something I want to continue to do each and every day for at least 30 days to see how I feel. Flow training is where you move your body in dynamic ways. This really helps open up your hips and your shoulders and really work your body in ways that you don't normally do during either martial arts or during weightlifting. Shall we go have lunch? I had to get myself cleaned up after that, but now I'm gonna be making lunch, and lunch is actually inspired by the tweet that kicked off this entire video. And that is where Sanji in the live action makes the elephant tuna with asparagus and sweet soy reduction. Granted, elephant tuna doesn't really exist, and in the recipe they say to use blue marlin, but instead I'm gonna be using a nice giant chunk of tuna that I picked up from my local market. What's great about this lunch is that it's super, super high in protein from that giant chunk of tuna, and it's really easy to put together. I preheated some water with just a bit of salt to blanch some of my asparagus that I'm gonna be needing for this dish. This is just gonna cook for about two minutes. Now normally after blanching asparagus, once they're ready, I would put these in an ice bath, but since I'm gonna keep these hot, I don't really need to do that right now. Now next thing is to actually sear the tuna. I'm just using the same pan for all of this. I'm just seasoning my tuna with a hefty amount of salt, making sure I hit every single side because it's such a thick steak. I'm also gonna do some black pepper on this guy just for flavor, and then just a touch of oil in my pan. Get this nice and hot because we're only searing this for about a minute on each side. Maybe maybe like a minute and a half. You're really not trying to go too long. Once it starts sizzling, you know it's hot enough. Then once it's on here, we can season the back side that we didn't season earlier. This is what about a minute and a half on one side looks like. You can see it has a little bit of color, not too much on there, and that's really all you want. We're gonna do the same thing on each side of this tuna. And now before I smoke the house out, I'm gonna remove the tuna from the pan. It's nice and seared on all sides. Put it onto my towel and then just set it to the side. I'm gonna rinse this out even though in the recipe it says not to because I want my sauce to taste like sauce, not my sauce to taste like tuna. Now we get to make the sauce and it's actually pretty simple. Little bit of oil in the pan, about two tablespoons of minced white onion. I'm gonna cook this just over like a medium heat, not too much heat on this. Then about two cloves of crushed garlic. And after about 30 seconds, that garlic is pretty much cooked. This is when I'm gonna deglaze it with about two to three tablespoons of water. And before that water is completely evaporated, I'm gonna add about two and a half tablespoons of soy sauce. And remember, this does say sweet soy, and we're sweetening it with one tablespoon of honey. Now I am gonna reduce this until it's thickened up just a little bit. You're essentially making a reduction. After about 30 seconds, kill the heat. Then grab the bowl that the soy sauce was in, and we're just gonna pour this directly into here. Oh, that actually looks freaking delicious. That has a really, really nice color, looks nice and rich. It smells phenomenal. Heat it up one more time, and let's get the asparagus done. Once the pan is hot, we can drop our asparagus straight in. We still have to season this even though it was blanched in seasoned water. So I'm adding just that bit of salt and some black pepper. Saute this on high heat for about 60 seconds. After a little bit of color, which doesn't take too long, our asparagus is done and I'm just gonna leave this in the pan while we plate everything up. And plate up is super simple. Now, in the show, he showed it as one piece of steak. So you could definitely take your whole tuna steak and put it on the plate. But every restaurant I've ever worked in that does serve tuna steak, you cut it for the guest because it's far easier for you to, for you to use a very sharp knife than it is for them to use a steak knife, which usually will tear up the tuna. Your tuna should have a nice ring all the way around. You can see even, even with the crust, it is still hard to cut this. So imagine cutting this with a steak knife. And usually you wouldn't serve the end piece here, so snacks for the kitchen. Grab yourself a very large plate or a smaller one. You can do whatever you want here. Now you're gonna take your sauce and add some sesame seed that I definitely forgot to add before. It's about a tablespoon of sesame seed. Put just a small amount right into the center of the plate. Then take your tuna steak right onto the sauce. You wanna spread it out so people can see that they've ordered a steak that is not 
well done. Because like Sanji said, insult to the meat. Then just a bit more of our sauce right on top, but you wanna go kind of like down the center so you're not covering too much of that steak. Then of course, a couple pieces of your asparagus. Since there is no starch with this, I'm doing seven pieces of asparagus. And there, my friends, is elephant tuna with the sweet soy reduction and grilled asparagus. What's crazy about a meal like this since you're using a leaner piece of fish and some fresh vegetables and just a bit of sauce, this entire meal comes out to around 400 calories, 55 grams of protein, around 16 grams of fat, and really only around 20 grams of carbs. Like it's not a lot of calories, but it's a ton of protein, which is really, really nice. Great midday meal or a meal to end the day. But we still have one more special meal after this. I'm gonna tuck in to this first. Cheers. What can I say? Sweet, salty. You get those really beautiful flavors from the garlic and the onion. The sesame seed comes through. It complements the tuna really, really well. What about the asparagus? I'm gonna eat this like a Neanderthal. Normally you would just cut this at a table. Asparagus, one of my favorite vegetables. Mm. We still have cardio to do and then dinner. And cardio involves a lot of running because Sanji is fast, and I mean really fast. He runs so fast that the air around him ignites into flames just by him sprinting. To build speed and strength, the best option are stairs. Stairs not only increase your strength, but your speed depending on how good you can do them. Luckily, there's a massive flight of stairs near where I live, so I took it upon myself to go down what is basically Snake Way and make my way into this really, really shady tunnel to start this entire journey of my stair work for today. And remember, this is the second leg workout of the day, but I really want to earn my dinner for tonight. So there's only one thing left to do. Now it's time to go up. Making my way down the stairs was the easy part. Now I have to try to sprint up all of these stairs. I cannot express to you how tired my legs were just getting started. You can see how many stairs I've already done in this short period of time. These stairs felt completely endless, but after a few minutes, I made my way to the top of these things. Those stairs are no joke, guys. No joke. They're just about as funny as Buggy the Clown, so I made my way back down the stairs for the second set of stairs for the day. Luckily, I have a little bit of reprieve and I get to walk down the stairs to catch my breath. But then it was time to do one more set, and I got to it. I really wanted this second step to be non-stop, so I made sure that I didn't stop the entire way going up these stairs. Even if I had to slow down a little bit, the goal was to not stop going up these stairs. If I wanted to be like Sanji, I really had to make sure that I made this count, because he never stops trying. And after quite a bit of effort, I finished that second set. I am absolutely out of breath. Okay. Whew. That one killed. That one felt good. But hard work shouldn't go unrewarded. I use this opportunity to cool down a bit and enjoy the absolutely breathtaking view at the top of this trail. I found myself a nice bench and I decided I was gonna be having dinner right here because this, this is the best place to enjoy this dinner. And dinner is pretty special. It's the bento box that Sanji had made for his mom. Sanji had made this for his mom when she wasn't feeling so well. And unfortunately he had dropped it in the mud on the way over, it had rained on it, but there was a moment where his mom didn't care. She wanted to eat whatever it is Sanji had made. I think from that moment forward is what really created Sanji. He was able to make his mom happy with the simplest of gestures, cooking for her. This bento box was pretty easy to put together. I made some steamed white rice, put it on the bottom, one whole sliced banana because that definitely was in there, a Japanese style rolled omelet, which is just a few eggs that were whisked together and cooked in the traditional way, and then some unidentified fish, but I found some really beautiful rainbow trout. I descaled it, cleaned it, removed all of the bones so it was easier to cook, scored the skin, seasoned it with a bit of soy sauce, mirin, and a touch of sesame oil, then threw it in the broiler to cook it through and then cooled it down. I finished it by torching it to bring it back together and get that skin super crispy, and then sliced it and placed it right on top of the rice. I garnished it with just a bit of green onion and some furikake, and this hopefully would have been the bento that he had made for his mom. This is one of Sanji's most important memories, and honestly, bananas and rice are delicious together. Thank you to all of my Filipino friends for teaching me. So cheers to you and your moms. Bananas and rice, can't go wrong. The omelet, honestly, one of my favorite things, but I'm really looking forward to this trout. Mm. This is wonderful. 
I'd love to know one of your favorite food memories. Let me know in the comments down below. One of mine, honestly, was having dinner with a bunch of friends in Little Korea after Anime Expo a couple years ago. That was amazing. If you guys want to support the channel directly, check out the link for the books down below or become a patron like these wonderful people. My name is Chef PK and remember, keep playing with your food. Oh, and uh, go make something for somebody that you love, yeah?